Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, we are going to create a Python program that interacts with the ChatGPT API. This program will get a prompt from the user, send this prompt to ChatGPT and get ChatGPT's answer. To get started, the first thing I want you to do is to go ahead and create an account on OpenAI. So you need to navigate to platform.openai.com. This is where you're going to be able to access all of the APIs provided by OpenAI. After creating an account, you should find this page. Next, I want you to navigate to the page where you can find your API keys. So here I have one API key that I created today in this account. In your case, you will have a button here asking you to create your very first API key. So just press on it and then copy the key that you will get. The next step that I want you to do is to copy this and add it as an environment variable into your machine. So if you're using Windows, this is how this will look like. You have to navigate to your system properties, advanced, and here you have this button that says environment variables. Make sure to open it and add a new environment variable. Make sure to name your variable, what I'm showing you on the screen right now, paste the variable value, in this case, this is your key, and just press on done. All right, so you've created a key, you've created an account, and you have added the environment variable. One thing I want to note here is that you may or may not have some free credits in your account. So obviously the ChatGPT API is a paid API. It's a very cheap one because you have to pay just fractions of cents to get tons of requests to ChatGPT, so it's not expensive at all. But in some cases, new accounts do get some free credits, so some free usage, and some accounts don't. So to check this, I just ask you to go over here to usage and see what usage you may have. If you have some usage left, that means you have some free usage, that's totally fine. Or you may need to pay just a few cents just to get. One. First thing you need to do is to install the OpenAI library. So just go to your terminal. In this case, I'm using the VS Code integrated terminal, but you can use the regular CMD, it's the same thing. So here in my terminal, I just type pip install OpenAI. Now in my case, I have it, so I'm not going to install it, but in your case, just wait a minute and it should be installed. Now that you have the library, you can get started by writing your code. Going here, I have my main.py file and I'm importing two things. I'm importing OS and I'm importing OpenAI. After importing these, we need to get our OpenAI API key. To do that, we use the OS library from Python. So this is built in, no need to install it. And we just say os.getenv. So we're getting the environment variable that has this name. Note one thing here, that if you named your variable something else in this case, and you can, totally up to you, you're going to have to write the name of that environment variable here. So I only put this here because my environment variable is called openai underscore API key. All right, so I'm getting the value of this environment variable and I'm storing it inside openai.api key. So now I can interact with openai because I have put my API key, which means we're all set. Next thing we want to do is we want to send a request to the ChatGPT API to get some response. To do that, we say response is equal. So the response will be equal to the response that we get from ChatGPT. We say openai.chat completion. This is what will allow us to get this response from ChatGPT. Dot create. So the create function is necessary here because this is what will allow us to create this message for ChatGPT and get an answer back. Inside the create function, we need to specify two things. The first one is the model and the second one is the messages. The model in this case is which AI model are we using? So you may have heard that they recently released ChatGPT4. So GPT-4 is a new model. It's way more advanced than the regular old ChatGPT that we were all using for the last few months. So this is a new model. Now, ChatGPT itself, the one we've been using since fall when they released the first version of ChatGPT, is based on GPT 3.5 Turbo. This is the model that we're going to use. There is also GPT 4, it has been released. I personally don't have access yet. You may or may not have access. It is more expensive than 3.5 Turbo. So, for now, what we're going to do is to use the ChatGPT API, so the regular old ChatGPT. We specified the model. The next thing we need to specify the messages. This is where we're going to ask ChatGPT a question or give it a prompt. So inside messages, this is supposed to be a Python list. As you can see right here, we have the brackets. And then we add inside this list a Python dictionary or a dict. So as you can see right here, this dictionary 
specifies that the role is a user and then the content says hi chat gpt say hi back so this is a very very simple prompt i'm just asking chat gpt to say hello back to me now what does role equal user mean there are different roles that you can have in chat gpt there's the assistant role the system role and the user role the user role is what will allow us to interact very normally with chat gpt as if you were just using their website. The other two allow us to get a bit more advanced, allow us to fine tune ChatGPT slightly. For example, you can ask ChatGPT to assume a certain role or to store information using the assistant. So we're not going to talk about that too much in this video. For now, we're going to stick to role is user. So we specified the model, we specified the messages. In this case, we have one message and this is hi ChatGPT, say hi back. The last thing we need to do is to actually print the response that we get back from ChatGPT. This is super easy. In this one line of code, you just say response.choices sub zero. So why do we have this dot choices here? The reason is if you had sent multiple prompts, you could have gotten back multiple responses or multiple choices. We say sub zero because we want the first one. In any case, there's only one in our case, but we have to say sub zero anyway dot message dot content so content will be the response that chat gpt provides inside their message all right let's actually run this so i'm just going to say python main dot pi and let's open this back up you're going to notice it's going to take a bit of time but as you can see here you have the answer from chat gpt and it says hello there how can i assist you today so as you can see we have this working we just spoke to chat gpt all right Let's make this a bit more advanced. What we want to do is to allow our user to give their own prompt to chat GPT. So here, let's just say user underscore input, and this is going to be use the input method from Python. And we're going to say enter your prompt for chat GPT. And now here inside the content, so the content that will give chat GPT, rather than hard coding this message, I'm just going to say user underscore input. So this string will be passed over to chat GPT and then chat GPT can answer. So we only change this one piece here by adding a new user input. So let's actually run the code again. And as you can see, it says enter your prompt for chat GPT. So I'm going to ask it, what are the best places to visit in Spain? And this is a very generic question that you can ask ChatGPT yourself. You can even ask it, what are the most popular programming languages? Or can you help me with Python or anything that you want? The same way you've been using ChatGPT on the regular UI, you can use it here. So as you can see, it gave us a response. It does mention that as an AI language model, I do not have personal preferences, obviously, but these, these are some of the most popular places and gives us a list of six different cities and there are other places as well. So we were able to interact with ChatGPT using our Python code. Let's talk a bit about why we want to do this. You may ask me, ChatGPT exists. There's a UI already. Why do I need to write this code in Python to use it with the API? You may have any other application in Python or any other language, and then what you can do is you can integrate ChatGPT with it. For example, if I had a travel application, what I can do is integrate ChatGPT with it to give me suggestions on places to go within my application. There's plenty of use cases to use the ChatGPT API. I do recommend trying to build a specific type of application. So here in this example, this was pretty generic. All we did was talk to ChatGPT and get an answer back. I recommend you try to integrate ChatGPT in an existing programming project of yours and see how it can further enhance it and make it smarter using AI. All right, thank you so much for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.